Today I'm going to demonstrate a prototype showing the integration of rocket data virtualization with IBM's application discovery platform. In this demo, I will show how simple it is to create virtual maps to ZOS data sets, leveraging information gathered by the application discovery product. First, a, a little bit of background. Uh, creating virtual maps uh, for data sets is, is generally a little bit cumbersome because it requires gathering the artifacts, uh, specifically data set names, COBOL copy books, or possibly PL, PL1 include files, to uh, combine together in a manual process in the data virtualization tool. Now, with IBM application discovery, all of this information has been gathered up front by the user, so all of the hard work or heavy lifting is actually done by IBM application discovery. Now, what we intend to do with Rocket Data Virtualization is, again, leverage this information to greatly simplify the mapping process and allow mapping many, many uh, data sets in one-step, pick-and-click sort of process. So what I'm showing here is the Data Virtualization Studio, and what we've introduced into the studio is this Discovery tab. Now, this was introduced uh, for initially for IDMS, where we can easily map data from IDMS without collecting any artifacts. And what we've done is a prototype which enhances discovery to include IBM application discovery. Now, IBM application application discovery is made up of multiple projects. In this case, we are supporting a single or showing a single project when you expand this tab named Easy Gig Kirk. This project, I've added a set of COBOL programs, a set of JCL and JCL procedures. Uh, I've imported this using their build tool into the project. What we will do is we will go out and we will read the uh, MSSQL database to identify data sets that have been matched to COBOL copybooks within that project. So if I expand the data sets tab, by analyzing the JCL and the COBOL, what we will receive here is a list of data sets that have been discovered in the JCL. And if I expand these uh, data sets, we will see the COBOL copybooks that, uh, that actually map those data sets. Now, in the first case uh, data set, there's one COBOL copybook. In the second, the second represents a sequential file that has different sorts of transaction records in it. Now, the great thing about this is all you need to do is select these things to map them, and you can do it as high as the data set level, creating a virtual table, and it'll try, it'll map everything within, uh, with all the data sets that show up in this tree. What I'm going to do is just select two of these data sets. The first one I'm going to select by uh, the COBOL copy book, and the second one I'm actually going to select by the data set name to show that uh, we will create four different maps for that particular data set. Now, if I right-click and I select Create Virtual Tables, what you see is a wizard that comes up with all of these uh, copy books and data sets. And so what will happen here is we will get five different virtual maps through simple pick and click uh, in a, a short operation. So first, one thing about the information in the application discovery is that all we have are data set names. We really don't know what types of data sets these are, whether they're vSAM, sequential, or some other type of data set. So we need to validate these data sets by going to the server and looking at catalog services. And I just clicked that validate, and what it did was check that all of these data sets, in fact, do exist on the mainframe, and we do know what type they are. In the first case, it is a vSAM file. In the remaining cases, they all match to the same sequential file. Once I've done that, it's as simple as clicking Finish. And what that'll do is go through and create a separate virtual map for each one of these COBOL copy books. And so again, the first map will be against a vSAM data set, and the remaining maps will all be against a sequential file. And what you will see come up in 
your tree here on the virtual tables are all the maps that were just created. And just to show these, in fact, work, I'm going to take this first one, which is a vSAM KSDS, and I'm going to generate a query and execute the query. And what you see here is the vSAM data uh, that's been created through the virtual map. And that's all there is to it. There is no collection of copy books. There's no discovery of data set names. All of that work is, in fact, done up front and sucked into the application discovery uh, database. All we need to do is take this information and, and generate, uh, generate maps through a simple selection process. And that is the end of the presentation. Thank you.